Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. In this episode of Sump Banter, I've decided to do something a little bit different. This is for all you old school folks like myself. Um, what it is, is this morning I woke up having recorded uh, an interview with two of the arbitrators from the Wellywood campaigns here. And one of the questions that I asked them was, what do you feel might be missing from the current iteration of the game? Um, neither of them are old enough to know the subject matter that I'm going to be talking about, but I was kind of expecting and hoping that they would be answering this question for me. Um, they didn't, because they're too young to know. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sylvie and Rory. Um, so I woke up this, this morning thinking if that question was asked to me, then there is a clear and obvious answer to that. And the thing that I think that's missing from the current version of Necromunda, or the three things I would say that are missing from the current version of Necromunda at the moment, are three of the original gangs that were in the old version of Necromunda, or what we, what we refer to as Old Munda. Now those three gangs are known as Scavies, Ratskins, and Spirers. So what I'm going to do in this video here is just kind of, for those of you who are old school enough to either have those miniatures, um, the metal miniatures that they released back in the day, um, or just have an interest in the lore of those three gangs and want to try and recreate it to the new rules setting of Necromunda. Here are some suggestions I have for making Scavy Gangs, Spira Gangs, and Ratskin Gangs in the current version of Necromunda, and what you might use and how you might go about building a roster that represents those gangs. So first up, we're going to talk about Scavies. Now, if you don't know, Scavies were a gang of mutants, degenerate mutants, um, led by a guy called Karloff Valois, who was basically a sort of underhive necromancer. Um, he was a Dramatis Persona, or special character back in the day, he had a model and everything. He was pretty cool. Um, but Scavy Gangs were released as a supplement to Necromunda, which also contained Ratskin Gangs and Spira Gangs as well. But first we're going to talk about Scavy Gangs. Like I said, they're a gang of mutants. Now, in the current lore of Necromunda, there are indeed muties, as they're called. Um, there are a number of mentions of mutants and muties um, in some of the books that are out already. Um, as to whether they will release a Muti Gang or a Scavy Gang at some point, I'm not really sure. I, of course, hope they will, and many of you will indeed hope that they do release um, a Scavy Gang, because I do feel they offer something different to the current gangs that are out there in terms of their lore and perhaps their playstyle as well. Um, and again, this video is for people that know about Scavies, but if you don't know about it, then you might find this interesting too. So. <clears throat> a gang of muties. Originally they had um, a bunch of different types of pieces. Um, they had a leader, of course, like any gang. They also had a couple of big guys or brutes, um, which were known as scalies. These were kind of like reptilian big guys, a bit like the guy from um, Spider-Man. can't remember his name. Essentially, their playstyle was hoardy. They were hoardy as hell. Um, there are a current couple of, couple of current gangs which are also very hoardy, um, and these are the sort of ideas I would say that you could implement if you wanted to create a scavy gang um, using either the old models or making conversions of your own. Um, but the only thing that I find is a real difficult one with this is of course covering those scalies rules, um, and also the addition of what are called plague zombies. Now there are zombies in the game, but they're called brain leaf zombies, and they are sort of an arbitration tool for certain scenarios and whatnot as well, which I believe were in the bad zones and whatnot. The book of, uh, I can't remember, book of something, um, the one with uh, Cal Jericho on the front anyway. So there are current rules for zombies in the game, and, and if you speak to your arbitrator about it, maybe you could cost those zombies and actually use them in your gangs, perhaps that would sort of fill the gap for using plague zombies in your scavy gangs. Um, so <clears throat> the ideas that I've had for scavy gangs, if I was wishing to um, create a scavy gang in the current version of Necromunda, you've got a few options basically. So bearing in mind they're mutants, um, there are rules for mutations in this game. Now those mutations are strictly sort of limited to chaos corrupted gangs and chaos helic gangs. Um, you've also got to think about the skills and weapon access for scavies as well, because they are fairly basic. So, scavy gangs were very ill-equipped. They had very um, basic equipment, i.e. Uh, reclaimed weapons, they had lots of stub guns, they had um, blunderbusses and things like that. So immediately, what I think about um, is a Cordor gang. So, 
the current rules for Cordor, obviously they do have fairly minimalist equipment, um, quite shoddy guns and whatnot. And I would say that the Cordor house list actually kind of matches a Scavi Gang's house list quite well. There are of course a few things that are missing. Um, there's no discus, there's no harpoon launcher there, but you can get similar things from the trading post later on. So my first option for creating a Scavi Gang would be to use a Cordor template, basically. Um, to create a Cordor Gang, um, leaving out the redemptionist aspect of it, of course. Um, the other reason for this is that the skill access for Cordor Gangs lines up pretty well with what Scavi's had before as well, with Brawn and Ferocity being the two main skill trees that you had back in the day, I believe. So with that in mind, Cordor is the best fit for me. Of course, if you are going to use Cordor, you would have to make them, um, in order to access those mutations, you would have to make them corrupted, Chaos Corrupted. Um, and that would give you um, a really good base sort of foundation for a scavy gang, I think, in terms of the skills, the weapons, um, and whatnot. So the only thing that you haven't got in this, like I said, was scalies. Um, that you could sort of cover with the addition of Ogryn Brutes, perhaps. Um, in terms of the Plague Zombies as well, it's a bit of a difficult one, that, because um, there is really currently nothing other than the Brain Leaf Zombies. So I think if your arbitrator is cool with it, um, and it's certainly not broken, then maybe cost those Plague Zombies and include them in your games as well. Um, but I do think uh, Corrupted Cordor would be the best sort of rules fit for a um, scavy gang. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about are rat skins. Now, rat skins I think are less likely to be brought out in the current version of Necromunda because they were seen as being a bit sort of culturally insensitive at the time. They were directly sort of Native American inspired, but instead of um, the animals that you have in Native American culture, it was purely rats. I personally think the law was really, really cool. Um, they've done that in, in Warhammer for years. They've always sort of like took, taken other cultures and based an army around it and whatnot. Um, they don't do so much anymore because it's deemed as cultural appropriation, but you can't do anything anymore in this current world, can you, um, without offending somebody. But rat skins to me, um, do have a few options if you want to use those original models they're pretty cool um, but in terms of rules you've got a few more options than you would uh, with, with scavies i would say the first option of course um, that screams to me is uh, of course an outcast gang because they are basically a native american type of gang they're a bunch of scouts and they're a bunch of um, quite swift moving sort of shock troops very sneaky um, they sneak around the underhive uh, and they worship spirits and whatnot um, and they've also got very sort of minimal equipment. They had sort of muskets um, and stub guns and auto guns, things like that. Um, so I would say uh, an outcast gang would be the sort of obvious one and probably the easiest route. Now, the reason why I say that is because with an outcast gang, you can have weird leaders and weird um, champions. Um, Ratskins did have a shaman, which was their kind, of, their kind of champion. So you could have a champion that you use as a psyker. And you could find a weird power that sort of fits the fluff of rat skins um, for that champion and call it a shaman. Um, your leader was a chieftain. Um, that could be interpreted in loads of different ways, but really with outcasts, you don't have access to very high rarity equipment. Um, the scum in an outcast gang are, um, you know, very cheap. They're 30 credits. They're not very good. And they get access to cunning skills um, once they do turn into specialists and stuff. So that does actually fit the the fluff of scavies pretty well too. Um, that's the one option for, for um, rat skins, sorry, not scavies. The other one would be um, perhaps uh, Escher actually, um, and using um, a lots and lots of prospects, lots of wild runners who have bows. Now they could be your juves, they could be your, your prospects, um, and instead of using Felix cats, you could use that stat line with giant rats, for example. Uh, and I think that would work really, really well. There's an idea for you. Um, now, of course, you probably wouldn't have the psychic access that you'd have uh, if you did outcasts, but I think from a fluff perspective, using wild runners kind of works pretty well. Um, you probably wouldn't use death maidens and such, and you probably wouldn't use chems either. Um, but there are things at the trading post that also come from sort of rat skin backgrounds, and there have been mentions of rat skins in some of the novels, um, some of the Necromunda novels, even in recent times actually, with uh, Fire Made Flesh has a rat skin character in it, I believe. Um, shout out to Denny Flowers there. Um, so that's another option. The other one, which is quite 
again, quite clear for me is, is to use Ash Waste Nomads. Now, the reason why I say that is because they are very similar, actually, in terms of their sort of play style and their vibe. They, again, they've got sort of scavenged weapons. They've also got the skills that line up with Ratskins pretty well, having cunning and agility and stuff. They're fast, um, they're sneaky. They would fit pretty well. Um, you could totally use Ash Waste Nomads as well. So those are three options that you've got there for um, for a Ratskin gang, I would say. Um, so it's totally doable, absolutely doable. Um, I don't think you need to do anything too dramatic to make a Ratskin gang, it's totally possible. But my, my first option for them would be Outcasts. Now onto Spiras. So Spiras are a tricky one. Uh, if you don't know about Spiras, then you'll either love them or hate them. Um, but they were very, 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 very elite. The most elite gang in the game. They kind of replaced um, Brats back from the old, old, old version of Necromunda, um, which was known as Confrontation. Um, Spiras are very, very small gangs, so you'd usually have four or five fighters max, um, but they were tooled up um, to the absolute teeth. Um, you had four different types. You had Yeld, um, Jakero, Oris, and I can't remember the name of the other one, but there were four different types. They all had different flavors, and they were basically nobles that came down and hunted in the underhive um, just for sport. Um, one of them was very sneaky and stealthy and had sort of web weapons and claws. Another one had wings and flew. One of them was just a massive hulking brute with big power fists and the other one was a sort of lightning fast agile swordswoman. Um, now in terms of rules and stuff, again if you were to try and make a gang out, out of uh, current rules to fit the Spira sort of template, uh, the only real option here is Venators, right? Now Venators works pretty well because they are the most sort of elite gang in the game um, by default because you get access to quite rare stuff at the trading post, um, you know, to begin with. I think your leader gets rarity 11 and below, your champs get 10 and below, and your gangers get 8 and 9 and, and below. Um, so you can get access to some really cool equipment which actually might fit the mold of the Spira. So you could really create a gang of maybe four guys um, and just arm them to the teeth with weapons that actually fit those four profiles that I just mentioned. Of course, you could use the wings on the Yeld, you could make that into a grav shoot and a grapnel launcher, for example, that might uh, get around the sort of fluff of flying. You could also use web weapons and lightning claws on the sneaky one um, for the big massive guy that could be a leader you could probably give him power fists if you got the rarity for that um, and some auto weapons as well and for the Jakero that's probably quite easy because we've got power swords and uh, las weapons there as well um, you don't have psychic access with spiras typically um, and of course you can choose the skill sets that each of your fighters have to match those original profiles as well so actually spiras are pretty viable as a venator gang I would say but you don't really have any options with any of the other rules, I would say, at present. Um, so that's Spiras. Of course, the extra bonus gang that I'm going to talk about, and this has never actually been a gang in Necromunda, but I feel mm, does kind of, it does miss from the, is missing from the current version of the game, is a Beastman gang, quite honestly. I've had a few people asking me this. I do have my own Beastman gang that I've converted up, um, and I use them as Goliaths. Plain and simple, I use them as Goliaths, as I like to call them. They look really cool, I'll try and get some good pictures of them, but I use them as a Goliath gang. I don't see any problem with using gene smithing to make them maybe slightly tougher, but the sorts of weapons that you'd give Beastmen like, are, are pretty obvious there as well. Um, the skills line up pretty well with Goliath as well, having brawn um, and ferocity and stuff too. Um, I think Goliaths work perfectly for a Beastman gang. Um, so do the weapons, to be honest, but you know, Beastmen have never been a thing. They've never really been a gang as such, but they are obviously present in the current lore through Gore Harfhorn and other Imperial Beastmen and Abhuman types that appear in the Underhive. Um, so those are some of my ideas for the missing gangs in Necromunda, whether or not they will be done at some point by Games Workshop, I'm not sure. I have, an, I have a suspicion that Scavies or at least Muties will come at some point, especially now we're in the Ash Wastes. Um, and I'd love to see those plague zombies and the mechanics around just really hordy zombie gangs would be really cool. I do think that's something that's missing. Um, Ratskins, 
I don't think they will do them. I think they've kind of already covered that area with Ash Waste Nomads a little bit because they are quite similar in terms of the sort of play style that you might have. Um, again, though, I could be wrong. They, they've recently released squats. Um, I never thought that would happen, so they may do rat skins at some point. I just feel that they might be very sensitive nowadays to people's um, people being offended, basically, um, which is fair enough. People get offended very easily, as we know, uh, in 2022. Uh, Spiras, I don't know, honestly. Um, I hope they don't release them because they were too powerful back in the day. Um, and I didn't like them personally. I, I used to have a friend who played Spirus and he just whooped me every single time, no matter what gang I played, because they were just so, so powerful. Um, if they do do anything like that, um, I just hope it's not crazy, crazy powerful. But then again, like I've said before, Necromunda is not a balanced game. You already have Corpse Grinders and, and Gene Smith Goliaths dominating um, nearly every tabletop, so you never know, you never know. As far as Beastmen go, um, you know, I think that's just down to you to interpret how you like. Of course, the lore is there, um, so build up your own lore around your own Beastman gang, do what you want with them, make them a Chaos uh, Goliath gang like I have. Um, it works pretty well, I think. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Just my two cents on some of those ideas. I obviously just woke up with um, some light bulbs going off in my head when I was thinking about what's missing from the current game. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want any more information on scavies, uh, you know, rat skins, spires and whatnot, just Google it up. Um, there was an Outlanders sort of, uh, I think it was called Outlanders supplement for the original 95 version of Necromunda. So you could probably find out some rules um, in a few forums that people have made up for those gangs to translate them into the current version of Necromunda. But those are some of my ideas. Um, that's it for now. I'll be back real soon with another video, I'm sure. In the meantime, um, there's a competition going on if you don't know. I do need a new logo. I've had quite a few submissions already and they've been awesome. But please do send your logo submissions to wellywoodwargaming at gmail.com. Um, also, if you have any questions for me at all, whether they're what's my favorite food or whatever, I'm gonna do a, a video on just your questions, basically, a question time video. Um, so yeah, fire at me loads of questions, again, to my Gmail as well, wellywoodwargaming at gmail.com. Um, and please do like, share, subscribe, and um, I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace out.